The so-called migrant crisis has left Europe's leaders reaching for some pretty vile analogies. You've got a swarm of people coming across the Mediterranean. C'est un peu si vous voulez comme une maison dans laquelle vous habiteriez, il y a une canalisation qui explose. Yeah, a pipe. Europe can't be expected to host all of the refugees, can it? Well, it doesn't. Hardly any of them, actually. 86% of refugees are in developing countries, and that's up from 70% 10 years ago. Take Syrians. There are currently 350,000 of them who have applied for asylum in Europe, which works out to a whopping 0.069% of the EU's total population. Compare that to tiny Lebanon, home to over a million Syrian refugees, which means nearly one out of every five people in that country right now is a refugee. You might say, well, fair enough. Gulf countries haven't taken any yet. Plus, Lebanon is right next to Syria, whereas EU countries are much further away. And that's the reason why up until last month, poor old Britain had agreed to resettle just 187, yes, just 187 Syrian refugees. Or why Slovakia has pledged to take just 200, as long as they're Christian and not Muslim, mind you. Well, think again. Brazil, not exactly Syria's next door neighbor, has resettled almost 10 times more refugees from that country than the UK under the UN scheme. Hmm. Sadly, it took a heartbreaking image to make some notice the tragedy unfurling. But here's the hypocrisy. When European countries were preparing to militarily intervene in Libya, refugees mattered. Do we want a situation where a failed pariah state festers on Europe's southern border, potentially threatening our security, pushing people across the Mediterranean. Well, that worked out, didn't it? The bottom line seems to be that when it comes to bombing your country or overthrowing your dictator, Europeans are on your side and are ready to spend billions. But if you're just trying to flee your dictator or escape the bombs, well, the door is closed.